Hello, I'm Chris Williams from Read Comics, They're Bad For You, the name of my YouTube channel. Or if you're watching this on BitChute, the name of my BitChute channel is Comic Freak. It looks like Star Wars 9's box office is taking a drop as of this Friday, and we'll learn all about it as we read this article. Box office Star Wars Rise of Skywalker plunges 71% on Friday. So let's take a look at all the Star Wars apologists as they try to spin the narrative for Disney saying this isn't a total disaster for Disney, but let's get into this article. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker has passed 300 million domestic and 600 million worldwide, and it'll likely end the weekend neck and neck with The Last Jedi's 368 million 10 day domestic income. Disney and Lucasfilm Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker earned 26.2 million on Friday, soaring past 300 million in North America and 600 million worldwide. The film fell 71% from its 90 million Friday, which neither an emergency nor exceptionally strong. Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi dropped 76% on its second Friday, while Rogue One fell 67% on its second Friday, and J.J. Abrams' The Force Awakens dropped 58% on Friday, number two, which just happened to fall on Christmas Day. As presumed for a while now, The Rise of Skywalker opened well below The Last Jedi, but is having stronger post debut legs, which is not to brag exactly what I've been saying would happen for two years. Credit the straight from opening weekend to holiday break, a scheduling and advantage that Rogue One and Last Jedi did not have, but Force Awakens did. Wonder Woman 1984 and No Time to Die moving to 2020 didn't hurt either. Rise of Skywalker grossed 316 million domestic in eight days, essentially nick and nick with the Last Jedi's 321 million eight day come. After a 220 million opening weekend, it could gross around 31 million today, giving it a nine day total of around three. 346 million, or just below Last Jedi's 350 million nine day domestic cum. Barring a fluke in either direction, we can expect 78 million second weekend gross down a meh 56% from its 176 million opening weekend. It's amazing how the writer of this article is downplaying the fact that. The opening weekend for The Rise of Skywalker was 176 million opening weekend, far below what they estimated. That'll give it around 140 million for the Wednesday through Sunday holiday frame, and 368 million in 10 days of domestic release. If this all comes to pass, J.J. Abrams' The Rise of Skywalker will become the third biggest opener, not to drop over 100 million in its second Friday through Sunday weekend after The Force Awakens and Black Panther. It'll also put Rise of Skywalker nick and nick with Last Jedi's 368 million 10 day total. So about that The Last Jedi ruined Star Wars thing, there's still a decent chance that The Rise of Skywalker will earn about as much if not a bit more in North America than The Last Jedi. The undeserved self-assuredness of the writer of this article, just assuming that Disney didn't do anything like buy seats again, just like they did for Captain Marvel, is probably what Disney is actually doing with this movie. But make no mistake, this movie will probably lose money, and, and Disney will spin doctor the narrative any way they can to deflect criticism from themselves. Star Wars grossed $309 million in its initial theatrical release in 1977, while Empire Strikes Back earned $209 million in 1980, and Return of the Jedi earned $252 million domestic in 1983. Sixteen years later, The Phantom Menace earned $431 million domestic, followed by Attack of the Clones, $310 million in 2002, and Revenge of the Sith in $381 million in 2005, to the extent that Rise of Skywalker may have been rejiggered in order to placate The Last Jedi was terrible, folks. Well, that might have been a case of preventing a field goal by allowing a touchdown. To the immediate reception to Rise of Skywalker still puts the franchise on the defensive come December. 2022. What's this? The franchise is on the defensive till December 2022. Oh, you mean when Kathleen Kennedy is out on her butt, right? But let's get back to this article. That's for another day. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is still playing like a Star Wars movie 20 years ago. The Phantom Menace opened slightly below expectations. 64 million Friday through Sunday. 105 million Wednesday through Sunday. But kept up the momentum with a strong holiday infused second weekend gross 67 million Friday through Monday for a then record 207 million 13 day come 
we're seeing history repeat itself. The Rise of Skywalker is not quite as leggy as The Force Awakens, 2.17 times its opening weekend by day 10, or Aquaman, 2.6 times its opening weekend by the end of weekend 2, but it projected a 2.9 times weekend to day 10 multiplier is slightly above both Hobbit prequels. Both of those films went on to earn over 3.53 times their opening weekends. That would give Rise of Skywalker a domestic finish above The Last Jedi, 620 million come. If it earns 50-50 worldwide, it'll gross around 1.24 billion worldwide. That's below Last Jedi's 1.333 billion come, but not a Jurassic Park 3 level downturn overseas, not a Matrix Revolutions level downturn in North America, since it could be tied with Star Wars 8 domestically. As of Sunday, the question will be whether its second Monday through Thursday frame, also part of the holiday break, will be strong enough compared to Last Jedi's second Monday through Thursday frame, which was its first holiday week, to break out in terms of day-to-day -day comes. Find out tomorrow whether it will join the 100 Million Losers Club. Well, with the way Scott Mellison described The Rise of Skywalker's gross, it looks like it is basically following in a similar path as the previous movie in the franchise. But you got to understand, The Last Jedi, when it came out, it was riding on all the goodwill The Force Awakens made for it. This isn't the same world it was back then. Now there's all this, well, cynicism towards Star Wars that was caused by The Last Jedi, which has been exaggerated to a degree that it's now no longer just bad blood, but it's turned into something quite a bit different. It's turned into outright disdain, if not hatred. A lot of the old fans who've stood by the franchise for decades have decided to just move on to a different franchise or something else sci-fi or fantasy related because Disney got their dirty mitts into Star Wars, and now Star Wars is no longer Star Wars. It's a Disney princess franchise, so people are moving on from it. Because even the most hardcore nerd knows that Disney princesses are for little girls, not for men of any age. No matter how childlike that guy is, he will still gravitate towards something awesome and cool, which was what Star Wars was back in 1977 when it came out. But now... It's basically now ruled by Rey, the bestest woman ever, who's now a Disney princess, or at least going to be. So now we've all moved on from that and gone on to better franchises. Disney should really stop. I know it's the business model to sell to as many people as possible because they somehow think that everybody's interchangeable and that they can just replace one customer with another. Well, they can't. Star Wars was boosted up by white males for decades. But now that Disney doesn't need them, they're trying to get rid of them to appeal to people who don't buy their stuff and just basically, well, use Twitter all day and never get off the computer. Though I should mention there were always minorities as well as women in the Star Wars fandom, but Disney will never acknowledge that fact. They only see us all as white males that be chased off because they want to go after the Twitter crowd because they're stupid idiots because they don't seem to realize that these people don't spend money. No, they spend most of their day angry and basically raging at people online. That's all they do. They don't go to see movies. They don't buy comic books. They don't do anything fun related because fun to them is basically, well, damaging other people and basically trying to get them to kill themselves. If you like this video, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube is currently doing a subscriber purge as well as an ad revenue purge. So make sure you are still subscribed. If you're watching my videos but you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Read comics, they're bad for you. Then go over to BitChute and subscribe to my BitChute channel, Comic Freak. Hit that bell for notifications. Hit that like button and leave some comments down below. And if you could, could you also please Share this video, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it anywhere you think it would do the most good because YouTube is not going around promoting their own YouTube creators anymore and it would really help me if you could please share this video. Now listen closely, it's that time of the day again. 
Yes, it's plug-in time. Keep checking back to watch all my future videos for more information on my own upcoming independent comic book scum dogs. I'm Chris Williams, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video or review.